Okay, as we take a look at the activity, so one thing you will see as you look through, they'll have the purpose of why are we covering material testing. Material testing has been, and it always relates back to a real world example. The Challenger back in 1986 uh, was a shuttle orbiter. It exploded, killed several of the crew members. One was a high school teacher. And they want to ask why were the Challenger explode. So the big issue was dealing with the materials and the structures, the amount of pressure that that shuttle had to go through and endure. So a lot of real world problems get solved with this. Under the procedure, they will de describe a lot of things. These are things that you have seen in the PowerPoint already. What is axial stress and shear stress, normal strain, what symbols you are working with. This is stuff we've already talked about, but it's there for your reference. As you go on to the next one, the next page. So you'll end up seeing that actually, page two. We'll have more of these. They'll have some common variable names, just the listing. They'll have some basic formulas. You will have that on your formula sheet already. So I would really encourage you using your formula sheet. And then it says identifying the five-step problem solving method. I'm gonna go ahead and walk through that. The first step is kind of identifying knowns and unknowns. Step two is drawing a picture. Three, and sometimes I interchange these. Step three is writing an equation. Four is substituting and solving. And five is maybe doing a conversion if necessary but most of the time it's documenting the final answer. So number one here is the one I'm going to focus on. A weight of 18,000 pounds is supported on a rectangular base plate that is 9 inches wide and 2 feet long. The base plate rests on a concrete slab. Determine the stress that the base plate exerts on the concrete slab. So express your answer in units of pounds per square inch. So as I take a look at the uh, problem, I'm going to need my worksheet to be able to show up here. So my worksheet, I'll find number one for the problem here. So here's what I have. I usually like to kind of draw these out first. So I end up having a rectangular base plate and I'm gonna go ahead and just a simple sketch is gonna work. So maybe I go through and kind of draw this out. Rectangular base plate, very simple sketch. So as they say here, it has 18,000 pounds, so pounds is a unit of force. And on your formula sheet, you may also be see it expressed as P. You have a, it's nine inches wide, and it is 20, or two, four, two feet, excuse me, long. So as I start taking a look at the knowns, so I know the width, nine inches, I know my length, two feet, and I know how much force is being put into or being exerted onto the, onto the plate. My unknowns, one thing I don't know, what's the area? So stress is directly related to force divided by area. And then I need to know, so here I got lowercase sigma, and that's going to be my stress. All right, so as I take a look at this problem, some of my equations that I'll need, area, length times width, and then I'll also need to know that stress is equal to force divided by the area. So as I look to kind of apply these in, one thing I need to do is I need to take a look at the units. So right now, two feet, nine inches, I can't really go through and solve for those because they're not, they're not the same unit. So two feet, is 24 inches. You can always do a conversion. Take 2 times 12 gives you 24. So in this scenario I'm going to go ahead and need to make sure because they want us to express the units in pounds per square inch. So that should tell us that that feet, feet measurement will need to go through and be changed. Okay on this side area is length times width. So here 9 inches times 24 inches when I multiply those, my area is going to give me 216 square inches. All right, as I take a look at the rest, so I have my area now. I've got a force and my knowns. So now I can solve for the stress. Stress is force over area. My stress, I'm going to go ahead and substitute 18,000 pounds divided by 216 square inches. 
And my final result, when I go through and run this in the calculator, I'm going to end up getting an 83.33 uh, pounds per square inch. But as far as my final solution, we want to keep in mind of what our significant figures are. So in this case, in any one of these problems, the, the most amount of significant figures I have is going down to two. My force has got two significant figures. That's the lowest amount. That's the lowest amount of significant figures. This has got three. So in this case, my stress. I'm going to go ahead and and keep this at 83 pounds per square inch. And that go ahead. That finishes out number one.